Hey guys, this is Levi with Oboe JM Film and Photo, and we are going to be doing a quick little review of my Canon M50 setup. Uh, we have a Canon M EOS M50, uh, we have a small rig cage, and then we also have a Sigma 18 to 35 lens and a Viltrox speed booster. I think this is probably the best setup you can probably build with the M50 if you're wanting to do a budget like vlogging and or like filmmaker build and I just kind of wanted to review it so we're going to head down to the park and we're going to see how it does. So we made it down to our local park here and I just wanted to talk about this thing. So first like I said, we have a Sigma 18 to 35. It's a very famous lens. It's been out for like like something crazy, like five to like 10 years or something like that. Uh, it's an f 1.8, so super wide aperture. You can get really good depth of field, great low light. Uh, I've seen a lot of people pair this lens with like a red camera and different things like that. So I wanted to pair with the M50 because I wanted to get the absolute best you know quality for what the camera is. The literally the lens costs more than the body, but we also have this Viltrox speed booster. Now if you don't know what a speed booster is, basically it allows you to, basically it reduces the crop on the camera. So cameras will automatically crop from time to time depending on whether it's a smaller sensor or this and that. And typically full frame cameras, cameras that without a crop, Typically, uh, you don't really need a speed booster for, but things like this, things like Sony's cameras, like GH5's, a lot of times people get a speed booster so it reduces the crop so it has more of a full frame look. And that's why I got this one for this. This one also happens to be an adapter for full size Canon lenses. So this is the EF mount, uh, and then this, this is the adapter that allows you to do an EFS to an EF mount. And it also happens to be a speed booster, so it works great. It allows you to get, you know, a lot better quality lenses on here. It allows you to let more light in, and it's, you know, I really like it. However, there are some drawbacks to it. If you take a look here, you can tell that there's some movement, there's some play on the lens and on the speed booster. Sadly, it's just not a very quality, it's quality in the sense of how it, how it works, but as far as feel, the whole system feels janky. Like, it just shakes some. Uh, I also have the small rig cage on here. I love this cage, it works well. I definitely highly recommend it because the grip on the M50 isn't very good as it is. But whenever you add the cage, it gives you a lot more to handle. The drawback there is that this cage, same deal, doesn't stay on very well. It has some movement too, unless you keep that stupid tight. And I don't wanna break anything. So. You know, it's a good setup, it's a good budget setup if you want to get started, but it's not perfect. Uh, on the side here, we only have a mic input, which you do need. You only got a mic input. And then on this side, we have an HDMI, and then the ability to uh, plug it in, uh, to like transfer files. You cannot charge this camera, sadly. We have a screen, which is nice. It is flip out and around. This is great. So, as far as like vlogging, like you can't you can't beat that like it works it works well so this is a vlogging test we're filming in 1080p uh 24 fps shutters at 50 and uh yeah we got the face detect autofocus going on right now which honestly is just it's pretty good it's really good and i mean and autofocus is dope yeah i mean i'll be honest with you the autofocus on this camera with this like face detect is working better than the Nikon, which is like a two thousand dollar camera. I mean, however, they're pretty on the mark. Yeah, I mean it's pretty good. What I'm saying is that like the autofocus on this camera is really good. It's just in 1080, and that's kind of what stinks about it. The thing that is the biggest draw for this camera in particular is the price point. You can get the body for about five hundred dollars. The drawback to that though is that that good autofocus is only in 1080p. In 4K, it doesn't work. And in 120 FPS, it doesn't work. It only works with 1080. On that note as well, the 1080p on this camera is good in the right lighting. I wanna really emphasize that because I feel like a lot of people don't. The 1080 on this camera is good in the right lighting. 
even with this nice lens, if the lighting's not good, the image, I think, is still grainy. And I'm talking with the right, I'm talking with the ISO all the way down. It still seems grainy to me. So, you know, it's a good camera to get into it and get started, but do I consider it a good professional camera? No, honestly. But if you want to get a good setup for around a thousand dollars, you know, and really get some solid stuff, this is a good camera. So we don't normally do gear reviews on this channel, but I thought we'd, uh, I thought we'd give it a try. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Me and Seth enjoyed making it. It's been a good run with the Canon 50, but it's time for it to say bye bye because it is gone to some person on eBay because I'm selling it because I upgraded and I got the Nikon Z6. So future videos will be on that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a comment, thumbs up, like, subscribe, whatever. If you didn't like the video, let us know. Let us know what we could have done differently because we're trying to we're trying to get better. So. Anyway, we got a whole lot more content coming. Anyway, JM Film and Photo, Obo, out. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>